worship. Let's worship him, Father. We give him praise. We worship you, Lord. We exalt you. We magnify you. We celebrate you. We adore you. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have worship. Clap your hands for the King of Kings. And you may be seated. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Psalm 37. Verses 23 to 24. Psalm 37. Verses 23 to 24. Where the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I'm speaking on the subject, Order My Steps, Part 4. Order My Steps, Part 4. We must allow God to order our steps. We must allow God to order our steps. That way, we will know both what to do in life and how to do it. Allowing God to order our steps is concerned with knowing what we must do and how to do it. Knowing what we must do and how to do it. In other words, divine guidance deals with approach to issues of life approach because you may be capable you may be intelligent but if your approach is wrong you will still not get results the bible speaking in ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse number 15 ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse number 15 it says the labor of fools wearies them for they do not even know how to go to the city. So it's not enough to know the city you want to go to. It is also important to know how to get there. And divine guidance majorly deals with the how-to of life. The how-to is life. You may be intelligent, but if you take a wrong approach, you will still suffer reproach because you will not be able to get your desired results. So please, as we begin this discussion, let us look at the following key points on divine guidance. Let us examine the following key issues on divine guidance. Number one, Divine guidance is your birthright in Christ. Divine guidance. This privilege, this art of having your steps ordered by God is your birthright. The meaning is God in Christ is under obligation to order your steps. It is your birthright. You have the right of access in Christ Jesus to be laid by God. To be laid by God. In John chapter 10 and verse number 27, Jesus made a commitment. He said, my sheep 
hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. You can't follow Jesus well unless you are in the habit of hearing his voice. If you're a sheep of Jesus, you are expected to hear his voice. The meaning is you don't have to run here and there looking for who to tell you about the future because God himself is willing, able, and ready to show you the right way to go in life. He is willing, ready, and able to show you the right way to go in life. In Psalm 32, verses 8 to 9, God said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you by my eye. Look at verse number 9. It says, do not be like the horse or like the mule which have no understanding. That is the challenge God has with so many of his children. They don't understand his leadings. They don't understand his voice so they can't hear it. There are so many of God's children that are operating by guesswork. But I want us to know that guesswork does not work. Guesswork does not work. If you guess, you goof. And that is the reason why so many people are goofing. Because they are guessing. They are not sure. So life is not a feasibility study. Life is not an experiment. And therefore... It does not go by trial and error. Life has never been an experiment. Life is real. And it must be approached with finality and exactness. And that calls for us to appreciate this birthright that we have been given to be led by God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Divine guidance is your birthright. Observation number two, quickly. God is committed to guiding you. Therefore, be equally committed to be guided. God is committed to guiding you. Therefore, be equally committed to be guided. Because there's no point guiding a fellow who is not ready and willing to be guided. In Isaiah 48 and verse number 17, Isaiah 48 and verse 17, the Bible says that the Lord our God teaches us, here it is, to profit. And he leads us by the way we should go. That is his commitment to his people. But his people must equally be committed to being laid. Isaiah 45 and verse number 2, I will go before you. And I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bounds of iron. God is committed to guiding me and I must be committed to being guided. That is, every day of your life, you must look forward to his leadings. You must look forward to his leadings. Look at Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 1. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. He says, I will stand my watch. He was looking forward to the voice of his guidance. To the voice of his leading. That should be your attitude. And the posture of your heart as a believer. That at any point God may give you a word. And you must look forward to it. Lord as I go into this day. What are you saying? About my prospects for today. What are you saying concerning this matter? I'm having business meetings. Order my steps. Show me the right way to go. Because in Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 21, 
The Bible says your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way. The challenge you have as a child of God is to build your capacity to hear God whenever he speaks. Build your capacity to hear God whenever he speaks because God is always speaking. The challenge is that people are not hearing him. Your ears must be hearing ears. I therefore decree this hour. Every blockage on your spiritual ears is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Any attack on your hearing faculties is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Beginning now, you shall hear God clearly by your ears in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, somebody's ears here are popping open to hear the voice of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Key points on divine guidance. Number one, it is your best right. Number two, God is committed to guiding you and therefore you must be committed to being guided. Number three, divine guidance is a lifetime demand. Divine guidance is a lifetime demand that God should order your steps. It's not just for now, it is a lifetime demand. A lifetime commitment. A lifetime demand. Now hear me. No matter how old you are, you can never outgrow the need to eat. You can never outgrow the need to breathe. Am I right here? Can you say I'm now 92 years of age, I've been sleeping all these years, so from now on, no more sleeping. Can you do that? You can never outgrow the need to sleep. Now, let me say this. As long as you live as a child of God, you can never outgrow the need to have God order your steps. You can never outgrow the need for divine guidance. You can never outgrow the need for divine guidance. To mean that divine guidance is needed at every stage of your life. Say that with me. Divine guidance is needed at every stage of my life. You must never reach a point in your life where you will begin to think that you no longer need God to order your steps. Never reach that stage in your life. I know that as we walk with God, God has a tendency of multiplying, promoting, and expanding his people like he did with Abraham. God moved him from being a generational embarrassment to becoming a generational custodian of the blessing. He said, the whole, all the families of the earth shall be blessed through you. But as big as Abraham became, he still was always in tune with the leadings of God. The leadings of God. The leadings of God. In Acts 24, I mean Genesis 24, verse number 1. Genesis 24 and verse number 1. The Bible says that Abraham was old, well advanced in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? In all things. As blessed as Abraham was, he was still obedient to the voice of the Lord. To the voice of the Lord. He was still in tune with the voice of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And please, I want to say this. As long as you are on a wrong road, no matter the kind of encouragement you receive on the way, you will never get to where you are supposed to go. Sir, if you are going to Blantyre, where are you going, sir? Blantyre. You are in the long way. You are going to Blantyre. If you take the Mzuzu road, 
No matter the encouragement people are going to give you at Kasungu, gender, eh, Zimba, turn off, even um, eh, what do you call it? As you go to, you will never arrive in Blantyre, sir. What will take you to Blantyre is a reverse. You have to retrace your way back to the right road that takes you to Blantyre. There are so many people in life, and some of them are listening to me, who we are supposed say to go to Blantyre, but they are on the Mzuzu road. Go back! You must go back, retrace your way to the right direction that God wants you to take. Otherwise, you are going nowhere. Otherwise, you are going nowhere. It is not how long you have taken a particular road that makes it the right road. It is not how long you have traveled a particular road that makes it the right road. You come to Jen and somebody is telling you, say, hey, where are you going now? Say, I'm going to Blanta. I say, no, this one is going to Karongo. He said, no, but I've been cruising for two hours, so it's okay. The fact that you have been on a particular road for three hours doesn't make it the right road if it is wrong. If it is wrong. If it is wrong. Wrong road is wrong road. Wrong direction is wrong direction. The only way to change it is to trace your way back to the right road. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can never arrive at your God ordained destination without his guidance. Without his guidance. Without his guidance. Without his guidance. Please listen to me. We are children of God but we are prone to mistakes. That is why we need the lifetime demand of being guided by God. Being guided by God in everything. In everything. That you have been in the Lord for many years doesn't mean you can now choose your own way. You know some people call themselves veterans. Now, I've been working with God for 52 years. So what? You can still make a mistake. Man is man. Man is what? Is man. Abraham, as spiritually sensitive to God as he was, he still made a mistake. He, the Bible says he listened to the voice of his wife, Sarah. I can't give you children. Can you now have sex with uh, uh, this our house girl? Ah. Uh -uh. Abraham said, this must be a powerful revelation. Not knowing it was a big mistake. Be careful. Because in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 12, repeated verbatim in Proverbs 16 and verse number 25, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but his end is the way of death. You see, when a man is taking a wrong path, it seems okay on the surface. For example, when a woman snatches a husband from an another woman, it looks fine. You're okay, smiling, kissing, going to the lake maybe. Mm -hmm. And maybe to Mzuzu, come back. Field work, honey. You can even carry him, carry him at the back to the shower room. But if that man is somebody's husband, it may look as if you're enjoying. One day, the Bible says, everything you are doing on that wrong road will lead towards our death. We can never be wiser than the scriptures. <laughs> it is not possible to be wiser than God. He is the only wise God, the only one. When you are stealing from your office, today 50,000, tomorrow 1 million, it sounds okay because there will be sausage on the table. Mm -hmm. Jewesses, 100%, Ceres, it's okay. But one day, what you are doing will lead to what? Death, according to the Bible. And death can be anything. Death may not necessarily be physical, but death can be anything. Now, death signifies the 
epitome of a calamitous end. The epitome of a calamitous end. Whether it is a relationship, a business, a career, anything in your earth will have a calamitous end. A calamitous end. That is why divine guidance must be made in your life, your lifetime demand to say, I will never outgrow the need for God to order my steps. No matter how big I become, I need God to order my steps. In any case, in the sight of God, everything is small. Eh? So if you think you are big in the sight of God, you are too small, you are too minute. Too minute. Key point number four on divine guidance. Please listen to me. One wrong step in life can destroy a whole destiny. One wrong step in life can wreck a destiny. Can destroy a whole destiny. One wrong step. One wrong step. When you go back to that Proverbs 14 verse number 12. There is a word that seems right to a man. But his end is a way of death. This verse of scripture is showing us that there are many things that look right, but they are not right. There are many things in this life that will seem right. They may even make psychological sense financial sense or even what they call logical sense 2 plus 2 equals 4 logical sense and yet it is not correct in the sight of God is it making sense here there is a word that seems right now hear me the most dangerous way in life is that way that seems right when it is wrong. That is the most dangerous way. The most destructive way. The most killing way. The way that seems right. It may be financially right. It may be culturally right. Because there are some Christians that believe culture in culture more than the scripture they believe in culture more than the scriptures it may be culturally right but if it is wrong in the sight of God it is a dangerous way to take it is a dangerous way to take it is a dangerous way to take there is a way that seems right and people may even clap for you as you take that way, say boy, they'll be calling you boy, oh boy, oh boy. They will cheer you on. They will cheer you on, not knowing that they are clapping you down to oblivion, down to the grave, down to the grave. Listen to me. Every step in life will either take you forward or backwards. Be careful. Every step you take in life can either take you forward or backwards. And that is where you need divine guidance to make sure that if you're going to take any step at all, it is going to be that step that will lead you forward. That will lead you forward. I read the story of a man of God who had a massive ministry in the 1980s. Massive ministry. This evangelism that we do, corporate soul winning, we go around, share tracks. He was doing that using a helicopter. Helicopter. Distributing tracks using a what? Helicopter. <laughs> so the whole area 49 will be littered with trucks from their church 
threw a helicopter. But hear this. One day, he took one wrong step that wiped out all his ministry. One step. One wrong step can scatter your destiny. I have dealt with people that have come to say, Pastor, I used to be a good person. I never slept with anybody. Never had sex with anyone until this particular day when I had sex with this particular person and from that one sexual act, somebody got HIV. Of course, that is not to say if you catch the disease called HIV, it means you are dead and buried. No, but it brings a lot of inconveniences because you have to be on medication for life. One wrong step. You have been faithful all this while and then from nowhere say, mm, let me just enjoy a little. <laughs> let me enjoy a little. Never call sin enjoyment. Because you will sink in no time. All I'm saying is, all of us, no matter how intelligent we are, we are not capable of making reliable and durable decisions without the guidance of God. No matter, I, I don't care how intelligent they think you are out there. You don't have the capacity to make reliable and durable decisions without the guidance of the Lord. That you must know. And that is what this verse is talking about. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 12. That is what it is talking about. That there is a way that seems right. There is a way that seems right. And yet, at the end of it is a way of death. All right, good people. So many things to share. How does God order our steps? Can we look at that quickly? How does God order our steps? I hope we can do this very quickly. Number one, through the scriptures. Through the scriptures. And I think that is clear in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. Through the scriptures, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. One of your greatest achievements in life if not the most important achievement in life should be that you know the Holy Scriptures knowledge of the Holy Scriptures. I don't care what else you know. If you don't know the Holy Scriptures, you don't know anything yet. The Bible says, from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith. Which is in Christ Jesus. Now hear this. Verse 16. We'll read up to verse 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable. You see. Man's profiting in life. Is packaged in the Holy Scriptures. The profit of man is in the Holy Scriptures. The Scriptures are beneficial. Profitable means beneficial. For what purpose? It says for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction. 
The scriptures are our guide. And I want to say that scriptural instructions are the most authentic avenue of divine guidance. The scriptures are the most valid avenue of the leadings of God. Therefore, it is a terrible destiny mistake to be ignorant of the scriptures. A terrible destiny mistake to be ignorant of the scriptures. Because the scriptures are profitable for these things. Can I have this verse in NIV? The scriptures are useful for teaching. The Bible will teach you how to handle your wife. How to raise your children. How to take care of your mouth. So scriptures will teach you mouth management. How to speak and when to speak. Ear management. Eye management. How to handle your body. How to handle your finances. Everything is in the Bible, sir. It is profitable, useful for teaching. The Bible will rebuke you. The Bible will correct you. But it is also for your training. You want to be a good leader? This book, the Bible, will show you how to be a good leader. And therefore, it must be your daily commitment to expose yourself to the scriptures. Let it be your daily commitment to expose yourself to the scriptures. How do you do that, Sam? Read the word of God. Read the word of God. Revelation 1 and verse number 3. Number 2, hear the word of God. What else must you do with the word of God? Hear me. Study the word of God. Study the word of God. And don't, don't tell me you don't know what it means to study. You do exactly what you do with your biology, with your mathematics, with, with your financial accounting. When you go back to school, the way you study because you want to pass exams, that is how you study the Bible, my friend. You compare, you, you look at definition of words, you look at where else is this passage or this issue mentioned in the Bible. You analyze the scriptures. The Bible says we must study the word of God. 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 15. 2 Timothy 2, we are, we are running very quickly. Uh, let me have it in King James Version. It says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Study the word. Study the word. Ezra chapter 7, verse number 10. Ezra chapter 7, verse number 10. The Bible says, For Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach it. Hallelujah. He sought the law of the Lord. That is, he studied the law of the Lord. Let's see what NIV says on Ezra chapter 7 and verse number 10. For Ezra had devoted himself to what? To the study and observance of the law of the Lord. To the study. See, you must study the word. What else must you do to expose yourself to the word? Meditate on the word of God. Psalm 1 verse 2. Meditate on the word of God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates. He meditates. Day and night. Meditate on the word. The other thing to do with the word is to confess it. Joshua 1 verse number 8. Confess the word. Confess the word. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. What is he talking about? Keep talking it. Keep talking the word. Keep declaring the word. These are things you do to expose yourself to the word of God. But also you must obey the word of God. That is practice the word act on the word of God James chapter 1 and verse number 22 James chapter 1 and verse number 22 be doers of the word be doers of the word Matthew chapter 7 
verses 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. All these scriptures are telling us one thing. Let us expose ourselves to the word of God. Hallelujah. How does God order our steps? Number one, through the Holy Scriptures. Number two, through the voice of the Spirit. God will order our steps, will guide us in the way we should go by the voice of the Holy Ghost. The voice of the Holy Ghost. Now hear this. The Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. The Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. He has a voice. He has a voice. I mean, John 16 and verse 13, Acts 8, verse 29. John 16, verse number 13. And when he, 16, verse 13, 13. Anyway, you take all those verses. I said, uh, John 16, 13, Acts chapter 8 and verse 29. Acts 8, 29, Acts 10, 19, Acts 10, 19, Acts 11, and verse number 12, Acts 11, verse number 12. Now, I want to show you very quickly here what I'm calling channels of the voice of the Spirit. We said God speaks to us by the voice of the Spirit. What are the forms of the voice of the spirit the forms of the voice of the spirit because you see we are talking about recover all recover all recover all we cannot recover all without the guidance of the lord david the man who recovered all held from god lord should i should i pursue shall i overtake them 1 samuel 30 verse number 8 and God answered, meaning God spoke. God laid, God guided. God said, boy, pursue, overtake. Pursue, overtake. Pursue, overtake. You cannot pursue if you're, if you're not hearing anything. You cannot overtake if you're not hearing anything about overtaking. So God had to speak. And that is why I'm teaching you on divine guidance. Because there's no better way to recover than this platform that I'm talking about. God showing you the right way to go. I decree this hour that as you build capacity in hearing God, you shall never go astray in the name of Jesus Christ. I said you shall never go astray in the name of Jesus. People, can I hear a louder shout of amen? amen? Channels of the voice of the spirit. Number one, the inner witness. The inner witness, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 16. The inner witness, the Holy Ghost bearing witness with your spirit that you are heading in the right direction. It is called the inner witness, call it the inner conviction of the Holy Spirit. It is also called inner knowing. People may ask you, how did you know about this? You can't explain because it registered in your spirit. Sometimes it comes as a thought or an idea in your spirit that boy, take this direction. Boy, move away from this girl. Huh? You have started the relationship. You are excited. But from nowhere, the Holy Ghost is keeping you restless. No peace. What's going on here? Because if you marry wrongly, I always tell you that if you marry wrongly, you are wrong indeed. One fellow wedded in church, I've told this story before. It is a true story. Some people think it is a joke. Wedded in church, powerful. In the presence of God, wedded. And then they went for honeymoon. When they were there, from nowhere, the young lady said, Honey, between you and me, who is more powerful? Ah. Uh -uh. Honey, what are you talking about? He said, no, 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 it's a serious question. Between you and me, who is more powerful? Ah, honey, what are you talking about? And then she shook herself. And then she turned into some creature. And then she shook herself again, came back. Honey, between you and me. <laughs> the young man said, you are more powerful. So 
Lord, the Holy Ghost may use an inner witness to tell you that this girl is bad. Move away. Inner witness. Number two, channel of the voice of the spirit is called the audible voice. The audible voice like 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. God spoke to Samuel audibly. He held the voice of a man calling him. He thought that it was his spiritual father Eli. Until Eli said no. Three times he said I, I didn't call you so you please. When you hear the voice again this time you say here I am Lord. Here I am Lord. Here I am Lord. But you see when he held the voice it was like the voice of who? Eli. So God will also speak to you through the voice of your prophet. The voice of your pastor. We'll talk about that another time. But I'm talking here about the audible voice of the spirit. Number three, it is through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God by his spirit can speak through gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have in mind here the gift of prophecy. The gift of the word of knowledge and the gift of the word of wisdom. The gift of the word of wisdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, our time is up. I only to talk about conditions for divine guidance. We'll talk about that next time. May we rise on our feet. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your two voice, I mean your hands and begin to lift your voice and say, Father, thank you for your commitment to leading me. Thank you for your commitment to leading me. Everyone lift your voice. Father, I thank you for your commitment to leading me. Come on, everyone lift your voice and say, Father, thank you for your commitment to leading me. Now, this time begin to pray for divine guidance. Father, order my steps in business in health in marriage in career may i never take a wrong step in this life help me lord never to take a wrong step in this life i will never take a wrong step in this life help me lord order my steps show me the right way to go may he give you peace success and prosperity open doors on every side Increase and multiplication. Change of level. I said change of level. Somebody is receiving divine promotion. Divine protection. Divine preservation. Divine prosperity. Divine expansion. I said divine expansion. In the mighty name of Jesus. May this week be your week of uncommon connections. And come on testimonies. Yeah. And come on change of level. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Please you believe that. Can I hear loud a shout of amen. Yeah. Psalm 23 and verse number 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.